Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conversations in Horror. I am your host, Kevin L. Powers. I'm also the festival director and co-festival uh, program director for Lefty Wicked Bill Festival events. Uh, and welcome to our show. Uh, today, oh, well, actually, let me just preface this with this is our special month of uh, Zombie Appreciation Month. And we have been doing a lot of great shows on zombie and the undead films. And there are many different uh versions <laughs> and we're going to continue that today with our our our, our today's episode which is going to uh focus on the film dead snow uh, i hope you've uh, seen this before and if you haven't uh, i hope we give you an insight on this amazing film now speaking with me today is uh someone you all will know if you're uh, one of our regular listeners it's sarah panazzo thank you sarah hi uh, and uh, she's going to help us get into the guts of this film. Um, so uh, let's uh, dig in, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. You just got to get used to these really bad puns uh, because we are doing Zombie Appreciation Month, and I'm going to have a little bit more fun with this, especially with this film. So, but not so. I mean- what better way to start this than talk about the start of the movie, which I think is one of the most brilliant openings of a zombie movie. Um, just bringing in the Hall of the Mountain King, which is <laughs> can be a very intense and scary song if you're familiar with Fantasia, or it can be a lot of fun if you've seen this. And just the fact that there is a zombie chase scene going on with this and you know how the buildup is going to happen and you're waiting for the zombie to pop up out of nowhere and it's just perfect i freaking love this opening i am so glad you mentioned the opening because i had the same feeling about it. when i rewatched it i was like oh shit i didn't recognize it the first time i saw this i was like this is fucking brilliant uh <laughs> i will preface everyone with this that i Really loved the film the very first time I saw it, but I didn't enjoy it nearly as much the second time. And um, I want to get your uh, kind of reactions on this film, uh, Panasso. Uh, kind of the same. I remember being super excited about it. And then this time around, I was like, it's fun. It's definitely a popcorn flick. Um, it's It's got some great moments. The kills are disgusting. And there's a lot of epicness in the movie. Um, but it wasn't like amazing. Yeah, I kind of. Uh, so when I very first, I when I first saw this uh, 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 for the very first time, I'm a. Everyone knows I'm a huge zombie fan. So seeing Nazi zombies, uh, the trailer had Nazi zombies just in gore everywhere. It made me want to see this movie so much when it originally came out. And because if you're very familiar with zombie and Nazi films, there are several out there. None of them too epically gray you know you have shock waves and then of course you have screamers and other than that there's you know or zombie leg no one remembers that movie <laughs> uh and, but you know the nazi zombies were kind of a novelty and sometimes they work and sometimes they didn't work at all but uh this film in the trailer made me really want to see it because who, what better way than to have a bunch of nazi zombies in a film you know and just have people just dis- getting dismembered and dismembering zombies it was it was it was a lot of fun and so that's how i approached the film when i first saw it and like you said when i first saw it it was like the greatest fun for a zombie film that i could have ever had um and i'm pretty sure this was before walking dead took the world by storm so yeah i believe so but the thing that i was interested in is i remember uh nazi zombies i was familiar with because of video games um call (laughs) of duty world at war made them super popular just the year before this came out in 2008 so i remember the the gaming community was freaking out because you know you could actually watch a nazi zombie movie instead of just killing them for fun on video games and it's just kind of carried over for the longest time because it's now like Call of Duty's like longest running additional level that they have is Nazi zombies. Um, and then we we don't really have too many more things other than Dead Snow 2 and then uh, Overlord, which is probably the most recent one. Yeah, it, well, if you it, it, it depends on how you consider the experiments and whether or not they're zombies or not. But yeah, you're right. Uh, there's very few... Um, unless you can, I'm trying to remember the, uh, 
Uh, I think Sky Starks also had Nazi zombies too, but <laughs> that's another weird movie with with Nazis in it. But uh, <laughs> that being said, uh, what I really really enjoyed about this film is the fact that the 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 Nazi zombies are not like other zombies. Oh yeah. <laughs> The, these zombies in this film have a particular purpose. And don't laugh at me, everyone, when you listen to my, my comparison to this movie. So as I'm re-watching this movie, the number one comparison I had to this fucking movie was Leprechaun. <laughs> I know it's hilarious, but think about it. You have these Nazis who only want their gold, and they'll get whatever they want. I mean, they'll do whatever they want to get their gold. And in Leprechaun, you have a little bitty Leprechaun. Oh God. Doing whatever he wants to get his gold back. And you have that one little coin that, you know, in the Leprechaun, where he has to get it from the stomach of the one simpleton. And, of course, at the very end of the film, you have that one little coin that seems to have uh, caused a lot of problems. And I'm just seeing these parallels from one of the most infamously Kevin. bad movies out there. Kevin, if you're going to compare it like that, then you can compare it to Pirates of the Caribbean and their cursed gold. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what I more compared it to was Indiana Jones, because, you know, Nazis and some kind of cursed treasure, um, which they reference Indiana Jones to like half of the movie. So it's it's fun. But uh, the other thing was that uh, they were less zombies to me, but more of uh, Draugr, which is like the Scandinavian zombies, but they're always known for protecting their treasure. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's, and especially from based on the director's standpoint of where he's from and everything being based out there anyways, it's, it's a lot more correct, I want to say. Nice. But I mean, they're essentially the same thing. They just don't want brains. They're just wanting their treasure. They, they don't want brains, and the 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 not the 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 zombie plague doesn't really pass between anyone, <laughs> and which is one of the funniest bits. Oh, so I have to mention I can't remember the character's name right offhand, but the the the, the film geek who uh, yeah Erland. Er, Erland, who's constantly saying "Don't get bit, don't get bit," and of course our main guy gets bit, and thinking that the the rules of a zombie movie actually work in real life. Yeah, <laughs> was one of the funniest bits to me, and if I'm getting ahead of myself, audience, it's because this movie has bits in it that are brilliant, whereas there are certain parts that are not as brilliant, especially in the, on the rewatch. So sometimes we might skip around just to get to the the good bits, and this is one of the great bits where uh, the main character decides that after getting bit, he thinks he's going to be infected, and of course, what do you do? You he do finds a chainsaw. Which is in my Evil Dead reference. I was like, holy shit, he, he grabs a chainsaw. I mean, that scene where they're actually grabbing it, too, is like a shot-for-shot shot remake of them <laughs> grabbing it in Evil Dead. Oh, my God. It was so... Uh, and that's the thing. I love the... There's there are scenes I absolutely loved. I loved even more the second time because I started seeing these references. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that was that was one of my favorite scenes in there is when he does that. And then, of course, when he gets bit uh, between his legs... Uh, what's he going to do about that? But then after, where he kind of forgets that he's been bitten. Yeah, and I mean, it, there's multiple scenes in the movie, like uh, the other one, who's the other guy? Uh, Beggard? Beggard? Uh, where he's like getting like cut up and he's just like, I'm just going to sew my neck together with fishing line and then duct tape it. And so <laughs> there's there's the whole thing of when you cut your arm off, was that really even necessary? Because we don't even know if it spreads that way. I mean, the director was like, out of the two major options, a virus or a curse, he wanted to aim towards the curse, which I guess he plays on more in the second movie. But, yeah. like, can you imagine how deadly he would have been if he would have kept his arm? Oh, my God. So, yeah, there's a lot of great moments in this film. Unfortunately, the reason why I didn't enjoy it the second time, and I don't know if, if it's the same with you, is the fact that I didn't really, really care for any of the characters particularly. They were very hard to remember. Like, every yeah. time I can't remember people's names, I had to stop and make a list and look up everybody on uh, IMDb just to figure out who they were talking about half the time. Yeah, uh, the only one I kind of remembered a little bit is uh, Erla, Erla, Erla. Oh, yeah, I was fine with the guys, but like the girls, like they were all almost interchangeable at some points until I think it was like Hannah is like the last one, but they all kind of mixed together and it's like, okay, cool. 
Uh, I think that if you're watching it for the first time when they originally come out, it kind of just plays into a bunch of friends going out to a random cabin that one of them one of them owns in their family and having a ski summer vacation because he mentions they had wished they'd gone to the beach. It's it's actually their spring break. It's set during Easter, which is hilarious I, because I, you know they all rise. <laughs> That's right. They do mention that it's Easter time. That's yeah. Right. But there's so many movie, uh, like, call-outs in this. Like, uh, Erland, with all of his film things, like, he's saying the exact rules of zombie movies from the beginning. Like, oh, well, we're making our first mistake. A 45-minute walk to the car is not going to save us in the end. And so many other things happen. Like, Erland falls for the classical trap of having sex in the movie and then dying within a few minutes. <laughs> Uh, so if you didn't notice, he's also wearing the shirt that says brain dead on it. Yes. <laughs> I don't think I realized it until the scene where he was being killed and as he was like being pulled through the window. And I was like, oh, man, that's funny. Yeah. I Because I... <laughs> audience, if you don't know, during that scene, they stick their fingers through his head and literally rip his skull apart and his brain plops out onto the floor. <laughs> And that's one of the things I still like about the movie is the playfulness of the movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is, n everyone out there listening, this is not a film that you can take seriously whatsoever. It is like Dead Alive, Brain Dead, aka Brain Dead. It is a slapstick, funny ass zombie film that's, that's gory as hell. Uh, yeah. I think one of the reasons why so many people remember it and, and why it was such a it had such a huge impact when it originally came out is because of the gore factor. Um, and I think that's probably why I watched it originally as well. Uh, <laughs> but on uh, subsequent viewing, I've realized that I really didn't care for the characters all that much. Uh, mm -hmm. But I just kind of liked watching the gore gags. So thankfully, a lot of this was practical. Effect. Yeah, I mean, they're really over the top. They're really well done. Um, besides that, the only other like massive note I put in here was throw as many snowmobile stunts in this movie as possible. Management, probably. <laughs> You know what? I did you mentioned that I was like, oh my god, he's souping up the snowmobile. It was uh, so two thousands, like <laughs> uh making another reference to uh, uh, Evil Dead. I actually saw that as uh Army of Darkness when he's souping up the car in the medieval times. Uh I kind of saw, you know, he's putting the gun on the car. He's yeah, I was like, my god, that's a brilliant idea. I'm glad that they just went for broke and through the kitchen sink at this movie uh to make it as crazy and entertaining as possible <laughs> yeah they basically took how many different ways can you kill these zombies and they're like okay well we can like try and do molotovs and see how that <laughs> works and uh fun That's fact right. actually they they built that cottage and burnt it down during that scene so when they're digging through the wreckage that's the actual wreckage of the cottage that they built burnt to the ground <laughs> Okay, hopefully they had a fire safety person on set for that. Jeez. But no, then you've got like the machine gun on the snowmobile. I mean, there you've got uh what's her name hanging from the zombies intestines off the cliff. Oh yeah. There's just so many weird deaths and kills and it's it's just fantastically gory. Yeah, and over the top. You can't, yes. you can't <laughs> way over the top. So um, another great thing I wanted to mention, because I put this in my notes as well about the film, is how beautiful the film looks when you're watching the, the, the atmosphere and it's all covered in the snow. And then all of a sudden you see all of this blood just being splattered everywhere. Yeah. I don't have, I, when I'm watching this, I don't have that, that great 4K HD version of the movie where everything's crystal clear. I'm still watching my... Uh, dvd version of the film and it still looks good on that version as opposed to having the greatest version out there i mean it's a great landscape to be on it's it gorgeous out there and it's not what you expect from a zombie movie either or a nazi zombie movie let's, let's make it in the winter time snow covered caps everything um and the scene where all the zombies the imps are popping out out of the oh ground, my gosh like that's it, it's it's a visually stunning movie yeah uh, no matter what the characters mean, uh, the movie is a visually stunning movie. It it really is. And just the fact that they were able to do so much with their movie was 
I mean, out in the middle of nowhere, especially. And I mean, like, it's it's just crazy. Do you happen to know how much if this movie was a um, uh, low budget it, movie or? Uh... Oh, it it had a budget of two million and it grossed two point <laughs> two million, so it was definitely not a big hit until it kind of came out on DVD and it started getting talked about everywhere. Yeah, I can see. I can see that for this movie. Uh, and I can see that's one of the reasons why they went into production with uh, Dead Snow 2 is probably because I don't remember and I watch a lot of movies at the theater and I don't remember when this movie came out of the theater. Um, I remember hearing about it from I, I'm assuming it's festival runs when I was reading about the movie and I was like Nazi zombies in there. I got to see this as soon as it came out. So um, that's how I came into watching this film when it originally came out. Uh, did you watch it when it originally came out or did you watch it a little bit later? No, I did not watch it when it originally came out. I think I watched it a few years later when I was in college. Um, so, yeah, it would have only been like two or three years later. Um, but, yeah, like I said, Call of Duty really got me <laughs> into it. Because at first I, I would have not really cared about it. But then playing that, it's like, okay, well. Um, the U.S. premiere was held at Sundance, okay. which is where IFC purchased the U.S. distribution rights. Um, otherwise, I think it was mostly just done overseas it had a limited release starting in june 2009 and its dvd release in february 2010 okay. so yeah it didn't have a very big release over here at all it sounds like uh, yeah i must say i read about it uh who knows what horror magazine i was reading at the time <laughs> yeah but i mean like dead snow 2 comes out i haven't seen that one yet and that one looks like a ton of fun but uh <laughs> It's that that one is all in English, and it's like it was made for the response of everybody saw this cult classic. We have to make it worldwide. Well, I'll say this: if you haven't seen Dead Snow two, uh, just put multiply Evil Dead two by Army of Darkness by Dead Alive, and that's what you have. Uh, the fact that it's called Red versus Dead is hysterical, <laughs> and it kind of goes with one of the jokes they had in the film where. Uh, one of the guys at one point picks up a hammer and a sickle and actually makes the communist symbol. And one of the zombies like shies away in disgust versus like being like, oh my God, he's going to attack me. And it's like, okay, they're afraid of communism. <laughs> it is, yes, it is a lot of fun. If you thought, if you think that the first film is fun, the second one's even more fun and even more chaotically entertaining. Um, I actually am very excited. I think I'm going to go ahead and rewatch the second one as well because I haven't seen that one since it originally came out either. Um, I do enjoy the movies by by the director because I think yeah. he do he did do the uh, Hansel Greta Witch Hunter, I believe, and another yeah. movie. I really he, so he directed and wrote Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters, and then mm -hmm. he just directed What Happened to Monday and Violent Night, which. I love Violent Night. Yeah. It is my all-time favorite Christmas movie at this point. Um, it is just way too much fun, and it definitely shows an extension of this. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Uh, and thankfully, that was a success for him, because uh, Hansel and Gretel wasn't, and neither yeah. was. Uh, I don't know how Dead Snow 2 did, uh, to be honest with you. I have no um, idea. Yeah, I'm it's not there. sure. It have yeah, yeah. Up. Um, but I loved Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunter. I thought it was very uh, fun and entertaining, but I think that's what he makes, the director makes. Uh, yeah. He makes those type of funny, entertaining popcorn flicks, and he does a really good job at it, uh, you know, stretching the imagination to its fullest, because who would have ever thought uh, anyone would come up with a Hansel and Gretel as Witch Hunters movie, uh, much, <laughs> uh, much less a very violent Santa Claus movie. Hey, and it's a fantastic violent Santa Claus movie. I will uh, take it. I mean, we're getting a bunch of other ones like that now, too. I mean, we're getting a super jacked out, like, uh, who is it? J.K. Simmons as Santa starring The Rock as his bodyguard or something like that. So, Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. So, the movies are coming. We're going to oh. get sexy Santa. Oh my god! Uh, oh my god! Well, I guess uh, these are the Christmas movies for us adults. Uh, no kids under eighteen allowed. <laughs> yeah, it goes with our current trend of making horror Disney movies too. Yeah, Take everything you loved as a child and turn it into horror. Or uh, you know, uh, complete franchises like the whole Winnie the Pooh thing. Oh, it's universe so much. <laughs> 
I, I you know what? Uh, I wish someone would expand that snow into a franchise. I would love well, to go with a third one. <laughs> they were talking about a third one, and then I believe the main character Martin passed, so they didn't know how they could proceed with it. Oh, interesting, interesting. I didn't know they they were thinking about it either. Um, yeah, that would have been kind of hard. Yeah. Huh. But maybe uh, uh, the director will go back to it one day, you know, after after a little bit of time has passed. Find a way to get circumvent the uh, the the events of the last one and come up with something creative. Hopefully, he's no one's thinking about doing a remake. That just wouldn't be. Oh, like, I yeah. think no, no, that's another movie. I was going to be honest, but no, no, but no. Uh, number three, they were actually going to bring out zombie Hitler from what they did release about the film. Oh my god. Uh, no, I could just see something like, uh, was it uh, uh, Iron Sky type of movie? Exactly. With sky <laughs> sharks, it would be ridiculously crazy. Although I won't say anything bad about the Iron Sky movies because I actually love those fucking movies too. Uh, you know what? Zombie. Uh, putting aside the, zo- the zombies for right now, the the idea of Nazis as villains have all has always been a great idea for movies. <laughs> I mean, it's it's an easy target. Unfortunately, they're too easy of a target. Uh, but they're still, still so goddamn entertaining as a, a target. Mm-hmm. Um. So that that being said, you know, uh, I don't I don't, I don't know. Uh, what what are your what are your other thoughts in this film? Because you know, the thing is, uh, one of the things that people should know it has a surprising ending um uh, i may have given away already with the whole thing about the main character with the coin having the coin mm-hmm. to drink in. but in a sense uh the the nazis actually get what they wanted from the very beginning and with almost everybody dead yeah almost just every single main character dies every single regular person they introduce to the film <laughs> dies and i mean they kind of hint that martin dies at the end but then they bring him back for the sequel and nobody knows how ah uh, yeah no one's gonna know how for that one because of the fact that the movie was too damn popular on dvd or straight to video or mm-hmm. wherever it is that we all ended up watching the movie yeah and i think that was one of the notes i also had was like at the point where he's trying to escape at the end and he gets in the car and then the gold falls out of his pocket it's all because he's like struggling to buckle himself in and i'm like at what point do you just not buckle yourself in and just start driving? Like, why are you, why are you, I know like your, uh, like your brain kicks in and it's like, no, I need to do the normal thing. Buckle my seatbelt, put the car and drive and go. But like, at what point do you do like other horror movies where you're just like, nope, I'm driving. And then you just, I mean, I guess he never would have realized he had the gold until they tracked him down again, but. <laughs> Oh shit. So yes. Oh my god. So Dead Snow. Uh zombie horror Nazi movie that takes place in the snow covered mountains that probably on paper never should have worked, but it absolutely does. Uh to the point where, you know, even if you don't need a kind of three-dimensional characters in the film and most of the characters are pretty throwaway, it's still one hell of a great um an entertaining experience, I guess. Yeah. Is way of saying it. Uh, uh, anything else that you'd like to add to all that? No, I completely agree. It's a fun movie to watch. It's definitely one of those have a couple drinks with friends and enjoy it because it's it's got a few jump scares, but they're really funny for the most part. Um, but it's a really effective zombie movie. The the blood and guts are really well done. The story is kind of meh, but. You're watching it for the kills. You're not watching it for the story or the characters. Yeah, it's kind of like Leprechaun. You don't watch that for the characters either. <laughs> oh, but I do want to mention one other thing. If you don't like outhouses, you might have to avoid certain scenes in this movie. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I am so glad you all were here to allow us to discuss this crazy movie, uh, Dead Snow. As part of our Zombie Appreciation Month, I would hope that you, if you haven't seen it already, go out there and check it out. Um, it is a very meta type film. It's kind of like a, a, a you know, a film that the characters actually know the rules of horror films, although none of them actually pay any attention to them. So for the Scream generation, uh, you'll probably really enjoy this. 
Uh, with that, I want to thank Panazzo for joining me for this conversation. Go out there, everyone. Check out some of the other episodes we had, especially the ones in regards to zombie films, because there are so many of them out there, and we've only scratched the surface of some of the more cult zombie films. And we hope that you go out there and seek these out if you've never seen them before. But with that, I want you to enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for joining us at Conversation in Horror. Conversations in Horror is a Broken Lighthouse Pictures production produced by Kevin L. Powers, executive produced by Kelly A. Inoka, and originally filmed via Zoom technology. Conversations in Horror is hosted by Kevin L. Powers and co-hosted by various horror film lovers and filmmakers. To learn more about Mr. Powers, please make sure to check out his Patreon page and other social media platforms. Conversations in Horror is copyright 2024, Broken Lighthouse Pictures production.